We as EV enthusiasts are starting to deal with success to the point where governments are starting to recognize that funds for infrastructure are decreasing and they're needing to come up with creative ways in order to ensure that electric vehicle adoption continues to allow their funding of infrastructure in their states and at a federal level too, to some extent. And uh, what has been developed so far, in my opinion, is a uh, demonstration in double taxation. The reason being is my electric bill has taxes listed on it. And still, when I renew my tags, I have to pay over $200 to the state of North Carolina in addition to the fees that exist in order to renew my tags. And that's specifically because I'm an electric vehicle owner. And I'll get into a little bit more of that in a second. But because I'm paying tax on my electricity, and my neighbors who are driving ICE vehicles, of <laughs> there's increasingly few around me. My neighborhood is very EV-centric. Um, regardless, there's um, households that don't have electric vehicles in this neighborhood. They don't buy as much electricity as I do, so they're paying less tax. And my personal opinion, that's really the solution, is uh, tax the electricity that I use to fuel my vehicle in my garage instead of tacking on an arbitrary 200 plus dollar fee for my tag renewals. And there's other options out there. I've heard people say you could uh, remove the gas tax and put tax on the sale of tires because everyone needs tires, whether you're internal combustion or not. Um, and uh, there's been some other creative. So right now, as EV enthusiasts, we're being subject to uh, experimentation on how to refund infrastructure um, accounts for states that are very wide varying. And one of the arguments typically thrown out there, and I was going through my morning email and came up with this Clean Technic article, is that because we're driving electric vehicles that are heavier, we damage the roads more and should be um, required to replenish the infrastructure funds at a greater degree. And this article does a very good job of disputing that. Now, Clean Technica, obviously, with a name like Clean Technica, they're going to be prejudiced towards technologies that are pro-environmental. So there is a little bit of slant in the reporting, but I still find a lot of value in the reporting because, by and large, it's uh, data-based. Um, it's based in data, and they do a good job of describing where they get their data from. And there is a little bit of skewing, but um, in this particular case, there's a lot of meat in the article by Michael Bernard. And I'll link it down below in the description. And just to summarize, it's the medium duty, heavy duty vehicles that do road damage. The distinction between light vehicles that are ICE and light vehicles that are BEV is almost indistinguishable. And uh, so the actual road damage um, that is caused by a vehicle moving over a surface uh, is um, undetectable for light duty vehicles. It's all the medium duty and heavy duty vehicles. And I've heard that mentioned before, but this article actually goes into it. And it also goes into talking about the benefit to society about a low carbon transportation. And that's where the um, clean environmental stance comes through in this article to some degree. But still, it's a it's a well-worded article. You can see it's quite lengthy as well. Um, talking about the uh, breaking, there's good discussion in the comment section down below as well. But really what I'm trying to get at here is we as EV enthusiasts who are driving electric vehicles are being subject to a rather wide variety of solutions in order to ensure that infrastructure is able to be funded in our given states. And because we're now officially taking a portion of the overall market and we're not buying gas, it's a problem that needs to be dealt with. So what that solution may turn out to be, I don't know. And while I was going through this, I remember paying my tags just recently for my Chevrolet Equinox EV. And I saw the um, monetary value on there. I thought it was $250. And so I checked Google and apparently it's $214.50 for a full BEV in the state of North Carolina. And I was reading through that and I'm like, I thought it was $250 and I was looking and then I saw this link right here. So apparently the Alternative Fuels Data Center database has, and it brought me to this link in the state of North Carolina, you can see the regulations, has every state's regulations, both um, incentives in order to uh, purchase electric vehicles and also the tag 
or the uh, means of recovering funds for the infrastructure in any given state. So for your given state, I'll put this uh, link down below in the description as well. You can click and see what's available. You can also download it and see what it is for the entire country, which is kind of interesting. But I think we're now in the what's known as the messy middle of EV adoption where at some point we're going to have to come up with a normalization of how we fund infrastructure projects. I really think the United States um, road system is second to none. I mean, we have a beautiful system. I love driving on interstates. Um, I love going for uh, drives. In fact, me and my wife just went for a drive in uh, her Cadillac yesterday, and it was enjoyable. I mean, we have very nice road surfaces, and they need to be funded equitably, so I don't mind paying my share and it's fair to say that because i'm not buying gasoline i'm not contributing uh, in the state of north carolina i am because i'm deemed uh, 212.50 per tag renewal and i've got two electric vehicles so that's to the tune of 500 dollars a year that i'm contributing to infrastructure uh, in the state of north carolina for the use of my two electric vehicles but i still think there could be a better equitable solution and what that may end up being, I don't know. My personal opinion is because I am paying more for my electricity because I'm consuming more and there are taxes on my electricity, uh, that is um, a easy, equitable way in order to distribute the gas tax to electric vehicle owners is that there would be some measure. And I already know in my electric bill here, I use uh, Duke Energy. There's... <clears throat> A call out for electric vehicle charging on the bill. So they're able to see it because of the signature of the usage. They're able to say, okay, well, that's an electric vehicle that's charging. And you would think because they have that technology in place, they would just be able to take that line item and tack on the gas tax to it, an uh, equivalent <clears throat> amount of a gallon of gas for a kilowatt hour of electricity, whatever that calculation may or may not be and assign it to that. And if that was done across the entire country, I think that would be an equitable solution because it's not only <clears throat> a arbitrary <clears throat> single amount, it's also consumption base, which makes more sense to me. Also, the tire tax also makes more sense. So I don't really have a solution here. I do think that, um, and I'm not trying to soapbox, but we as EV enthusiasts have to recognize that we're living in an environment where there's experimentation on how to recoup because we're dealing with the success of the adoption of electric vehicles and that's only going to continue as time goes on so just be cognizant of what's going on in your area and you know vocalize if possible i don't really engage too much in politics um and i just pay my taxes but i suppose um there is a certain inequitability currently starting to develop and um we should probably be at least aware, if nothing else, of what's going on in that respect. And as far as the argument that electric vehicles, at least light duty, damage roads more, <clears throat> uh, this article is a good resource to refer to in order to dispel that, because that is simply not the case. It's the medium duty, heavy duty uh, that is putting more strain on road surfaces than the any form of light duty vehicle internal combustion or BEV. <clears throat> Thanks for watching.